Just because you do something different, like don't let it keep you from doing it. Welcome to the I Am Power podcast, episode two, where stories become art and art becomes important reminders. Each episode dives deep into the story of a special person who discovered their power against all odds. All of the inspiration that comes from each episode is then memorialized into a single unique painting that can be purchased in limited print quantities. Today we're talking to the incredible Boo Williams, a C5 quadriplegic who experienced a spinal cord injury at the age of 14. We discuss what it was like to have an injury at such a young age, how far she's come, how she stays motivated, and of course what the future holds. Let's listen up. Hello, Boo. I'm so excited to have you today. Excited to be here. All right. So I um I have been following you for a few years now. Um but we'll go into your backstory here in just a minute. So I just wanted to introduce you. And thank you so much for coming on today's show. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Pretty much a uh, bunch of spinal cord injury research is consuming my life right now. Uh, yeah. I'm also in school trying to finish my marketing degree. Um, and that, that's what consumes most of my time. <laughs> school and research. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So you're, uh, you're currently in Louisville right now, right? Yes. Very cool. Yep. And how long have you been there for just a couple of months? Or no, you've been uh, there for like a year now, right? Yeah. I moved up here in uh, January 2020, right before the pandemic. Awesome. And yeah. how, how do you like it out there? It's a lot different than um, North Carolina, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. From North Carolina, I, was, uh, I lived in a really small country town. And then moving to the city, which, I mean, for living in the city, Louisville's pretty nice. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Right, very good. So um, I had you on today because I, f- I think that you're such an empowering person. Um, you have a Facebook page that you use to kind of document your, your journey, your journey um, through your spinal cord injury. Um, and I, I didn't do a lot of research before because I kind of wanted it to be, um, I wanted it to be fresh and new and um, I'm interested. So I know that you were uh, in a in a car wreck when you were younger. So um, just mm-hmm. if you want to tell us about that, and um, and then yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah. So uh, whenever I was 14, it was a week exactly a week before my uh, 15th birthday, and uh, I was just going for a car ride, get out of the house. Uh, I was riding with my brother, and we were going to a convenience store, and it had snowed earlier in the week and we thought that the snow had all melted and we actually uh, hit ice on our way back in a curve and then he overcorrected and the rear side of my side like slammed into a tree. So it shoved the wheel through the floor pan into my back seat. And uh, so I got like the entire injury. He didn't get hurt at all. And it resulted with me breaking my neck, uh, my C5. I fractured my lower lumbar, like broke like three ribs, broke my pelvis, and then uh, nerve damage in my shoulder. So. Wow, wow, that's that's yep. intense. So, and you, so you were, you said 15. Uh, 14 when it happened. Turned 15 a week later in ICU. What was it like um, being? so young to experience something like that have have you ever been in had you ever been in an accident or anything like that before never broken a bone before then wow and so, i'm sure it probably just happened so quick for you that it was just like yeah do next you thing remember? I, did, I woke up in the hospital i don't remember getting transported i don't remember anything wow except waking up and then they had me so doped up that i had no idea like really what was going on the severity of the situation or anything really so like with my injury I'm paralyzed uh, from my chest down so like I thought that I was wearing a vest or something and I could I remember telling my friend I'm like yeah like what is this vest they have on me and she was looking at me like you're not wearing anything oh wow so So it was just like um like feeling wise um you just felt like a pressure or like a heaviness in your chest yeah and and you couldn't feel anything else it's different because um, like if somebody was to touch my leg or something, obviously I have no idea. And if somebody touches like where my ribs are, I wouldn't really know. But if somebody was to squeeze me, like I can tell the pressure. Uh, like if somebody burns you. me, I'd have no idea. I don't have the surface sensation, but I have like oh, the, wow. 
like a deeper sense the pressure sensation yeah wow so um did you go back to school afterward like how did how did that affect your life as far as like um your teenage years and um yeah so uh my injury happened uh, about a month into my uh second semester in my freshman year so the rest of my freshman year I finished out doing homebound and then I uh, I went back to school, um, my little country high school, went back there um, sophomore year, and I finished out, graduated on time. Awesome. That's yeah. that's amazing. Like, yeah, that's I, was, totally I felt amazing. very accomplished doing that, graduated with the high honors and what? Uh, all that good stuff. So. That's so amazing. Um, mm-hmm. So... Now that you're older, so that's, I'm not sure how old you are. Um, h- how many years has it been since that, since the accident? Uh, I'm 26 now. Uh, okay. So I've been injured for 11 years. Okay. And so the therapy that you're going through now, what's the, what's the ultimate goal that, um, that we're going for, for that? So the therapy I'm doing, I'm doing research and I'm doing therapy up here. So okay. what I'm involved in is so much different from anything I've ever, ever had anywhere else I've ever been. I've never even heard of the stuff that they do up here. And just the therapy side alone, they do, um, they focus on recovery. And anywhere else, you think that's what they would focus on, but that's not what they focus on. Like, you know, you think, uh, like, you know, whenever you get injured and you start going to inpatient, outpatient, whatever, most places are like, okay, let's focus on where you are right now. And focus on your abilities right now, not let's and, get you stronger, right. and so you can do and more. like trying to. Are, do, so when you say that they, um, when they focus on the right now, do you mean like they're just trying to help you function to the best of your abilities? They just don't. They don't really look into like gaining new abilities. Is that is that what you mean? Yeah, by that? for the most part, like they might help you strengthen a little bit, but not not significantly not and then insurance doesn't want to pay for it either and that's a big hassle so uh which is yeah but insane to me that yeah that would even <laughs> that i mean that in my opinion in my opinion once you get a spinal cord injury i think that you should be able to have therapy the rest of your life because right i mean get a body in motion need. stays in motion and, and sometimes Absolutely. you know we can't we can't move our bodies around that good so we need some help what they're doing at this place as far as physical therapy goes, like, how do you feel your, how much of a change in yourself have you seen since starting this? What's the difference um, as far as that goes? It's been major, really. Um, when I first started, um, with being a quad, you don't have very good uh, back muscles and ab muscles and stuff like that. So you, you tend to hunch and you, you tend to cease it is what we call it. You're sitting like a C. Yeah. And you get hunched over and all that stuff. And then, um, I, I wouldn't say I was like the worst, but, uh, I was, yeah, I would say I sat like that. So I'm like coming up here and, uh, yeah, I, I dealt with a pressure sore, uh, back in like 2015 to 2018. And that really like depleted a lot of my muscles from like having to stay off and stay in bed and all that stuff. So, oh wow. uh, yeah. So like having to recover from all that and then, um, yeah, coming up here and, I have a wonderful uh, physical therapist, and um, they put, like, a lot of electrodes all over your muscles and then have you do activities while doing that. So since I've been doing that um, and doing the research I've been doing, too, like, that's contributed some. But um, now I can sit up straight as long as someone holds my hips. Wow. So that's like a major improvement. Yeah. So is that, um, and that's not, that's not something that you could probably have, would have been able to gain by not doing something, um, uh, like this type of therapy that you're on. Um, so when you say that, I guess I'm just, I'm trying to learn here and I'm sure there's going to yeah, be a lot it's of people a lot. Yeah, that are going to be super interested in this story. Um, so When you say C5 fracture, for those that, I have a little bit of chiropractic knowledge, so, like, that's, like, right, like, right in here, right? Yeah, I actually have a very faint scar right here where they went in the front of my neck, and then I have one on the back, too. Wow, and so, when you have that type of fracture, um, and you, so you say you're, you're from the chest down. So how does your, um, extremities, like how with your arms, like how does that work for you? Um, when you initially, when you initially got into your accident, 
Um, was it like no movement at all? And then you had to kind of like work, work out to get that movement back. Yeah. So when I went home from the hospital, uh, two months after I'd been paralyzed, I couldn't, I couldn't move my right arm at all. And my left hand, I could bring it up, but I couldn't get it back down because, uh, with my level injury, uh, we don't have triceps and triceps pushes your arm away. And then, uh, so a lot of people were are like, you know, how are you a quad? You can move your arms, but my hands are affected and I can't, I can't move my fingers. And then, um, the back side of my arms, like I can't feel them. So right. it's like, as long as your arms are affected, then it makes you a quad. So if, if you're at sea you. level, you're a quad. Oh, okay. That makes, yeah. that makes sense. I get it yeah. now. So, but that's, I mean, that's awesome. So have you, you've gained a lot more strength. Yeah. I know that we have, uh, we have talked through uh, messenger a few times and, um, we talked about like hand strength and things like that. And so mm-hmm. you've, you've able to, you're able to get a little bit of movement out of those at all, or is it um, more so? Yeah. And I actually have these, uh, I don't know if you can really see them, but I have scars. Oh, you can kind of see it there. Yeah, they they go all the way down my arms, and uh, I I had tendon transfers back in 2012. Oh wow! Because uh, being injured as a kid has some perks, and you get in with like Shriners and all that good stuff, and uh, they yeah. give you tendon transfers. So I actually have pinch with my thumb, and wow. then I have uh, triceps, and that's from tendon transfers. So that's awesome. So when you say transfers, do you mean from like another part of your body, or was that mm-hmm. a donor? Oh, yeah, they wow. um they said that there was like three tendons that flex your elbow, but you only need two of them. So they rerouted one of them to substitute for my pinch, and then where your bicep has like two heads to it, they um take one of them and wrap it around to substitute for your triceps. That is amazing modern it's wild. medicine. That is so wild. I would have never, I would have yeah. never known that. So. Me either. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so I, I have a few questions for you now yeah, that we've kind of got sure. a little bit of like a, a backstory on what happened, and then um, and then a little bit of where you are now. So like, I'm so happy that you were able to do this program and that they are just really helping you. Um, yeah. So my first question is, if you could remember, how would you describe your ambitions as a child and how you saw yourself and what were you capable of as a person? So I, that's a that's a pretty like deep question. So we can we can you know like maybe what did how did you see your future pre um, pre injury and then how did that change for you post injury? What were your thoughts? Because I'm sure as um, I I can I can't even imagine like you're an incredibly strong person anyways. Like I just want to like say that I can't say that <laughs> enough. Like Thank you're you. like oh um so. As a child, how did that affect you um, going through an injury? So, like, what what were your thoughts before your injury of what you saw your future to be? And then um, how did that change after your Um, injury? Well, before I had my injury, I always looked at myself as a very ambitious person. I was always pretty smart in school and, you know, never really took anything as, like, a showstopper type of challenge. I was always, you know, I can conquer this type of thing uh very early on I was always getting myself ready for school like my parents didn't have to wake me up I even went and caught the bus so they wouldn't have to take me to school like they That's didn't so make awesome. me I just did it so I, didn't, I, was, I just wouldn't have to ask for help so I'm I sure some kids lot. now that are like hearing that they're like what you, you got yourself up for school <laughs> like that's, that's a thing <laughs> yeah so I know back until at least fifth grade I was doing that consistently and then uh you know got injured freshman year of high school and then, um, which I still, I didn't, I didn't see myself any different, really. I mean, I knew that, you know, I was paralyzed and stuff like that, but I wasn't, and a lot of people, whenever they, it first happened to them, they're like, oh, I'm not going to be paralyzed long. I'm not going to be like everybody else. I'm not part of your club. Right. Stuff. Did that and ever then, cross your mind? Did you yeah. ever think that like, this is just, I was like, I'll, like, I'll be walking by the end of college. That's oh, what I wow. was thinking. I'll be walking yeah. by the end of college and I'm going to walk across that stage, that stage and get my diploma. That's my goal. That's what I'm shooting for which you gotta have hope because if you don't have that right that goal, I can imagine that having exactly I could imagine that, that 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 having that ambition probably played a huge role in your initial healing yeah so so uh what I did not anticipate was whenever I was in high school and 
trying to have a social life and balance physical therapy and school and you know because I used to you know everybody I feel like everybody used to be kind of a procrastinator kind of wait the night before to do a project and all that but when it comes to spinal cord injury life you can't procrastinate because everything will build up and you won't have time for anything so you have to like that's something that I've gotten better with is organization. <laughs> I'm very organized. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, because, I mean, me and, like, I have to plan out when am I taking a shower. Or, like, I have to transfer into a shower chair and take a shower. And the shower's going to take me, like, twice as long as someone else. Or, you know, stuff like right. that. Like, it's a lot you got to think about. And, uh, a lot of things that we, that we probably take for granted and we don't realize. Yeah, like, I know I did. Yeah. But, yeah, um, I've always been very ambitious and... Uh, I know whenever I was, like, in high school, the way I saw my future was, like, I didn't even finish, I didn't even plan on, like, graduating from the high school I went to. Like, I was planning on going to school near Chapel Hill and finishing my last two years at, like, NCSSM and, like, and then going straight into college that way. I was just, like, school, 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 and, yeah. uh, you know, I had it all planned out, and then I got injured, and I'm like, well, can't really do that anymore. You're just going to have to rework that a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's still good, though, that you, I mean, the fact that you, like, I mean, continue to do, you know, go to school and you, and you graduated on time. Like that is phenomenal. Like yeah. superwoman right here. That's fantastic. So what has been your stickiest struggle, um, that has stuck with you on your journey? Like what's the mm-hmm. most difficult thing that you would say, uh, that you faced with your journey? Uh, a big thing that I face that I, it's a goal, it has been a goal ever since I've been injured and I still have not got to achieve this goal is like being able to transfer myself because where I have such a high level injury and where uh, my hands are affected, I can't grip things well. Right. And, um, and just like, even just the difference in a C4 level injury and a C5 level injury, there's a major difference in like function and strength. And there's a big difference with like a C5 and a C6. And, um, it's, I'm like, I'm at that fine line of being able to transfer myself. And, uh, and, the, and like been a do, big your, thing. do your therapist think that that's something that's a, a goal that you'll be able to achieve soon? Yeah. Like that's like, we're working on it. And that's my awesome. right side is weaker than my left. If I had two lefts, then I'd be fine. I could get it. <laughs> I could nail it. And another thing people don't realize, um, if you have an injury that's like, like T6 or higher, uh, you typically have muscle spasms, and oh, muscle wow. spasms, uh, they're like a blessing and a curse. Right. So, um, if you have really bad ones, and, um, I do most of the time, especially in the morning, then they can, like, throw you back. So, if I'm in the middle oh. of a transfer, it could, like, throw me back in the floor and stuff. So, I have wow. to be strong enough to be able to, like, like anticipate those. And, and can, like, not control, yeah. but, like, be able to just, like... yeah. I don't know what the uh, word is I'm looking like, for. Yeah, like, yeah. just anticipate. That's the best way I can uh, describe it. But it's a lot. It's a lot to go into it. But, um, yeah. yeah, once I get the strength down and be able to do all that, that'll be the biggest game changer for me. That way I don't have to rely on somebody. Like, hey, grab that slide board and, you know, hey, right, you know, help me right. get my hips across. And all that yeah, stuff. And, and you're still young. And, like, you're – and the fact that you're already had so much um, improvement – especially with this place that you're going to, like, I can see, do they, do they think that, uh, what they think is like your max, do they tell you like a max of like where, as far as regaining mobility back? they don't even know. They don't know. So yeah. like you, I mean, it could just, it could be months, it could be years, right? And mm-hmm. you just have to like stay super positive and like reach for the future. It That's seems all. like every time I'm getting to a point where I'm like, oh, I'm not making any progress. It's like that day or the next day is when it hits. And my therapist is like, whoa, today was like a milestone. Like That's today awesome. even, um, I was in physical therapy. I did my research and everything in the morning. And then I did physical therapy afterwards. And uh, we were just doing trunk extensions where I just lean forward and then just get back with my back. And then uh, today she said it's been the lowest she's been able to hold me on my trunk and the lowest that I've been able to go down and recover like independently so oh, like yeah. and, you know that's a whole new milestone so that's like awesome. things like that just keep me going heck yeah so do you ever when you're like I know that you talked about sometimes you kind of like 
not necessarily get discouraged, but maybe you're just kind of like having like a day where like, oh man, I really just want to like do this new goal. Do you ever just like look back at where you've come from and just, and just tell yourself like, dude, like, you know, like take it back a little bit. Like you have come so far to where you are now. It's just uh, amazing. Another thing that I really like is, uh, I don't get to go home that much. So whenever I do get to go home, uh, it's every three, four months. Um, everybody tells me like how much of a big difference they see in me, and especially like my boyfriend and stuff. Cause he really knows me. Like he, he knows everything yeah. about spinal cord injuries. He knows everything about what I'm doing. Yeah. So then like, and he knows my abilities and stuff like that. Just like in, um, at his house, I don't have an adjustable bed. Mm-hmm. So like whenever I'm in bed, I'll be like, hey, you know, help me pull up, and I'll pull up on him, and so and he can just tell he's like, yeah, your That's trunk like, is like so much stronger, and like your back, awesome. and, you know, I don't have to help you so much or you know this or that. So it's been really good. That's that's awesome. So, and that's, I mean, and that's pretty, uh, pretty sure I would, at least I would think, but I don't know much about, um, recovery with spinal cord injuries, but I feel like from where you probably started to where you are now, it's like a, a huge, um, yeah, just, huge I've been doing all of this for a consistent year and, uh, I took off for like, uh, I don't know, like two months or something too, around like Thanksgiving and Christmas and it's been really good. They that's say awesome. I respond very well to STEM. So that's, that's helped a lot. That's, that's fantastic. So you've, you've pretty much kept a positive attitude the whole, the whole entire time. Would you say that? So you've never really had like this moment of like feeling like super sad and then being like, okay, like I've got to, I've got to do better. I've got to like, you know, keep a positive attitude. Would you say that you've kept a pretty positive attitude the whole time? I think for the most part, everybody has bad days, and uh, I yeah. just have to be real with myself on that. I'm like, it's not just me, you know, everybody has bad days, and then uh, yeah. usually if I'm having a bad day, I'll call somebody to, like, I don't know, cheer me up or something, whether it be my boyfriend or some of my best friends that's been with me since day one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, you just gotta, you just gotta keep reminding yourself, and then if it's, if it's just a really bad day, you know, I'm just... You know, like, I don't have to live this day over. Like, tomorrow's right. going to be like, gonna we're be good. better. <laughs> I'm just going to yeah. go to sleep, and then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be different tomorrow. That's that's awesome. I, having a, having that support system is is amazing for anybody, especially anybody that's going through any kind of um, any kind of troubles or anything like that. Like, it's definitely good to find your tribe there. Whenever, are, um, gems. whenever I first got injured, uh, one of the very first people I met in a wheelchair was my rec therapist. It was her husband. And he came and he gave me the best advice that anybody gave me. And, you know, whenever you get injured, and, you know, paralyzed and all that stuff, like, you know, I was 14 and I'm sitting there yeah. thinking about, like, how am I going to live like this for the rest of my life? Like, how am I going to graduate? How am I going to, like, have a like, relationship? Right. How am I going to do this? Blah, blah, blah. Right. And then he came and he's like, you know, don't get overwhelmed. Just don't look at years to come. Don't look at months to come. Take it day at a time. So I just like, I just learned to just shut my brain off. I'm like, you know, don't, don't get overwhelmed. Like, don't look at all that. Like, if that doesn't matter, today matters. So That's awesome. That was actually one of my questions that I was going to ask you. Oh. I was like, what's the best piece of advice that someone's <laughs> given you? But like, I think that we all can definitely benefit from that advice, like, you know, just take it a day at a time. Uh, I know a lot of times, like, we see things and we have goals and we want to just, like, you know, I want it to happen fast. I know myself that I struggle with that all the time. And my husband yeah. will be like, Jessica, like, you know, <laughs> calm down. You know, it'll happen yeah. and just take it a day at a time. So, yeah, that's that's fantastic advice. Um, let's see. We like to uh, we like to talk about stepping into our own power and not thinking of that as a bad thing. Um, mm-hmm. How do you think, or how would you describe the power that you have to try and step into every day? Mm. <laughs> That's a deep one. <laughs> Let's see. I would just say, like, in the mornings is probably the hardest. Because that's like really starting the day, you know, I got to stretch my legs and then getting dressed and then just, you know, it takes me a little bit longer to do everything. And, um, so, you know, it's, it's my new normal. And that's what a lot of other people don't realize is, I mean, once you've been doing something for so long, I mean, that's your new normal. Like you kind of, right. it's not like you forget how to do, how you, how your life was before, but it just doesn't matter because, you know, this is my new normal. And, uh, 
I just remind myself to like self reflect all the time. Right. And I think that's something that I have, I don't know, I've just adapted with since I've gotten older. And especially being in Louisville, it's really uh, paved the path of how I want my life to be and how I want to live life and all that. Because up here I have so many good resources and my apartment is like ground floor. I have uh, accessible buttons and everything like that. Everything is very accessible for me. So it really... It's given me the independence that I really need. You know, I don't right. have to get somebody to get a door for me. Or, right. like, just things like that. And things like that can really be discouraging. And, um, I don't know. I, I guess I didn't realize how much I needed that in my life until I moved up here. So I feel like that's been, like, a very important part of my, like, journey and all that. Yeah. So, so, so basically, like, taking this trip to where you are now... Um, and you did you you took this specifically for this research? Is this the reason why you? Uh, yeah, you are the you epidural are? stimulator research. That's awesome. So. That is so that's so amazing what they're yeah. doing. Um, so you took this to uh, try this research, and in in doing that, you've actually kind of found a sense of power because mm-hmm. you're you're finding yourself and realizing your own strengths and like gaining some yeah. independence. That's and that's uh, whenever I get done up here, like. You know, I plan on moving back home. I mean, by that time, I hope I have my marketing degree finished. I'm about to be a senior. And, you know, I'll have that weight off me, too. And, you know, I'll be done with research when I move back home. I'll have my marketing degree. And then finally get to start a career. Because, I mean, it's just, it's so much. Like, it was spinal cord injury. And then trying to get all that under wraps. And then, you know, not live off disability for the rest of your life. And Oh, right. Well, I mean, if, if you don't feel like Superwoman, like I am looking at you <laughs> like Superwoman, like not only are you going and you're doing this insane amount of like therapy and, you know, core strengthening and body strengthening, but like you're going to college at the same time. Like that's, that's insane. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so I did want to ask you, uh, too. So with the, um, with the therapy that you're going through and so, and you're doing after the surgery, like where does, where do you stand after that? Do you, do you still have continued therapy or do you come back to where your hometown is or how does that work out for you once that's, once that's done? So initially I devoted two years to come up here thinking I was going to be implanted with the stimulator the month after I moved up here, but a year and a half later and I still don't have it. So my two years don't really start until I get implanted. And oh, I implant, gotcha. Okay. My implant date is set for August 3rd. Awesome. So I get to come home uh, like in a week and I get to spend a week at home. And then when I come back up here is is like just going full throttle all week of July to make sure that August 3rd happens. So, yeah. So yeah, oh, and then whenever I get that, it's going to be just it's even more work than when than what I'm like putting in now. So I'll, oh my I'll goodness! Yeah. Oh my goodness! Thank you. So, I, I live half a mile from the place, and then well, I that's can, good. I drive my van on the days that it rains and all that stuff. Just no excuses. Just hold myself accountable and just go. Yeah, just go, and you see that light at that end of that tunnel, and you're just like, mm-hmm. I'm going for it, and it's gonna it's gonna pay off. All your hard work is gonna pay off. So yeah. that is fantastic. Um. If, uh, what's the biggest piece of advice you would give to a younger version of yourself, um, who is in the thick of struggle, if you had just a few moments with them? Hmm. I would so say. So maybe, like, where you are now, and, like, um, maybe, like, where you are shortly after your injury, what would you tell yourself? Hmm. Let's see. I would say, like, never... I'm not just never give up, but like never, like just stop going, like never stop adapting. Like, uh, there's certain things I notice now that I'm like, man, I wish I knew this like two years yeah. after I was injured, and things, just things that have made my life easier. That, um, because there's a lot of things that you're, you know, your life's completely different whenever you're living with a spinal cord injury and. You know, you're starting from square one, and you don't know your resources, and you don't know what you're able to do until, like, you know, you're kind of waiting on other people to tell you what you can do until you just kind of figure some things out. And um, I kind of wish that 
there were other things that I would have just like thought more about rather than waiting for other people to tell me. To tell you, yeah. So, uh, yeah, but I don't know. I, I, I would tell myself to focus on me more too. Yeah. It, it, it bothered me a lot in high school about like, um, more of like, because I never see myself as different. And I, I still have the same mentality about myself as I did before I got injured. Yeah. And then I don't feel different until society makes me feel different. You know, what are some, what are some things that makes that when you say that, like, um, tell me what you mean by that. Cause like, I definitely want people to learn, um, to learn from you. And, and, you know, like I said earlier, like when I messaged you earlier, I had a few questions that I was like, I don't know how to ask this, but oh, I don't, you know, fine. like, <laughs> so like when you say that, what, what are some things that, um, that you wish that you could tell like society? If you've never talked to the person in the wheelchair, don't lead with, why are you in a wheelchair? (laughs) People actually say that to you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's awful. I don't even think I've ever even, I don't know, and like everybody's different and everybody looks at people differently and maybe it's just um, culture or mindset. I don't know. But like I've never looked at somebody in a wheelchair and even thought to myself, I wonder why they're in a wheelchair. Like... I don't, you know, I just don't look at it that way. So, yeah. All right, anybody, don't ever ask that question. <laughs> but on the terrible. flip side of that, for <laughs> I don't know, for at least me personally, if you have a young child and they want to ask me why I'm in a wheelchair, let them. Yeah. Because a child is just curious. An adult right. is more nosy. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't want you to shoo away your child and think that, oh, don't talk to people in wheelchairs. You know, right. that's what you're yeah. telling your child. So You're making I've, them think that, like, mm-hmm. something's wrong with them and they you yeah, shouldn't approach them then, or you shouldn't talk to them. And I would say that's, like, 95, I don't know, 95, maybe, like, 90% of people in public are just, they just stare. And, I, yeah. but, and you really notice that whenever you first get injured. But now, I mean, I just live my life. I don't notice other people until right. they do that. or you know, I could imagine that that's probably a lot more difficult at a younger <laughs> age just because of where our mentality is of, you know, we're a lot more aware of <laughs> of what yeah. other people are doing, what other people are thinking. And then when you get to an older age, you're just like, I don't, you know, you just like, yeah, your blinders on and you don't really watch, you don't really watch what other people are doing or saying. But yeah. So what's it like going, um, so also back, like back onto that question about, um, mm-hmm. making things better for your community. Um, is there, are there things like store wise that you, if you could change something like, I know that they have like wheelchair accessible places like ramps and things like that, but like, what's something that you have where you've like maybe went to a restaurant or you've went to a store and you've just been like, ah, I wish people would think about, you know, this. Can you think of anything, or is everything pretty good? So, since being in uh, Louisville, I um, I use a power chair most mm-hmm. of the time, and I, because I usually, I live like a mile away from anything that I need to go to, so most of the time, I just roll in my power chair, and I get good sun and everything anyway, so. Yeah. I don't mind it, like being outside, but going into restaurants, um, you notice that if they say they're wheelchair accessible, they don't mean power chair. Oh, they no. mean manual chair. And oh, I mean, no. like, getting in will be easy, but fitting under a table is like, no. So half the time I have oh. to put a plate in the lap. What? Or, like, things like that. And um, That is so wild. So, like, because it's time, down too far, right? Yeah. Like, the table's yeah, yeah. down too far? Or the tables, what I hate even in a manual chair is uh, the tables that have, like, the one center thing. Instead of like, mm. like on the edges, so that whenever you go under, your foot plate hits and you can't get under the table like you need to. Oh, so, all right. So, uh, restaurant owners, if anybody's listening, take note because, like, yeah, I, that's. I mean, it's honestly something that, like, you know, I would have probably never realized. That, and you, see, mm-hmm. especially like you said, you see where they say wheelchair accessible, and it's like, but is it really <laughs> wheelchair yeah. accessible? And half um, the bathrooms I can't get in anyway, so I just kind of gave up. Oh, my God, because they're so <laughs> small and, like, tight, yeah. like, the way that they're built. Yeah. Man, we got to do better, guys. Like, there's... Handicap accessible does not mean wheelchair accessible. So you always have to be specific. And then even then, 
you're still taking a gamble because people can give you 100% yes, this is, and then you get there and it's not. Oh, so, my God. You just have to, like, once, you, once you've been in this life long enough, you just got to realize that you just, you just gotta roll you with it. You just kind of try to go with the flow. Like it doesn't do any good. You're to like, be, like, you know, super like angry it's not gonna it. help me get upset about this because nothing's yeah. gonna change. Yeah. So. I just, I just wish that, like, you know, and and it's probably just our own ignorance of not, um, like, I mean, I would have never imagined because I, you know, I've never experienced that. I've never been with anybody that um, has to experience those things. So you don't think about things that. Um, could just definitely make our our lives, all of our lives, just a little bit more, you know, easier instead of making it more difficult. And then, of course, um, I don't know if you feel excluded because of these things, but um, sometimes there's there's definitely um, there's a there's a hole there that needs to be fixed, <laughs> like uh, like hibachi, uh, mm-hmm. like Japanese and stuff. Oh like yeah, where they cook in front of you. Yeah, I can't get under those. <sighs> Even in a manual chair, my foot plate hits. Uh, yeah. Not everywhere. Like, Aragato's, I could get in fine or something. But, like, yeah. there's been other place. I remember my junior prom, I couldn't get under it. I had to, like, sit way off to the side, like, kind of where they flip the thing up. And it was just, oh. it wasn't fun. I fell out of place. Uh, yeah. All right, restaurants. We got we yeah. to do better. This is, this is making But at me. the same time, like, <laughs> when I find myself getting frustrated about things like that, um... I actually have a quadriplegic friend that um, is uh, born and raised in Ireland, and mm-hmm. she tells me about the accessibility over there, and it is way worse. Is it? I was going to ask you if you've noticed if it's different when you come back home as opposed to being in a bigger city. Um, or is it, like, about the same? I don't know, because, like, downtown, uh, if a building is grandfathered in they don't have to be accessible so like i live downtown in louisville so there's what i can't go to any of the shops around here i wanted to go to boutiques and yeah i went out with my mom one day and i think there was maybe one i could go in and it was all hats or something i'm like oh yeah and and that's because of just the way that like the entrance is built for you yeah all of them had like a four inch depth well i'm like i'm at a loss for words right now like i didn't even know it's usually this... downtown areas that are like that and the sidewalks are usually busted up really bad and yeah <laughs> yeah oh, i wouldn't make it in a manual goodness. chair i don't know how my manual chair friends do it yeah that's pretty wild that's um yeah there's definitely got to be some change that's gonna happen there guys like for yeah. real there needs to be some change that's not it's not okay um I did have a question for you too, and this is kind of like a a physical question because again, this is new to me. I don't, um, I don't know a lot about, uh, spinal cord injuries. Um, so I've watched some documentaries where people have had, um, like amputees and they talk Mm -hmm. about this, um, like phantom pains or ghost type thing. Like, do you, have you ever, have, is that, is that a thing for you? Have you ever experienced anything like that? Mm, I have nerve pain pretty mm-hmm. bad. Like, I mean, not bad, bad, but, like, it's more on my right side of my body. And, uh, I don't know. Sometimes it's worse in the winter, so, like, cold weather, and then especially if the temperatures get below uh, freezing, then uh, my nerve pain gets flared up pretty bad. And it just, it just I don't know, it just feels like inflammation and yeah. things like that. And then, um, and, but, and you feel that, can you feel that through your extremity or is it? Yeah. Just I'll just be like, like my oh, right leg is killing me. You know, I'm like, Oh my wow. gosh. And I don't, I don't even know what to do at that point. I'm like, I don't yeah. know how to fix that. And then, uh, yeah. And then every now and then, I mean, it might happen like once or twice a year that I'll feel like I have a really bad itch somewhere where I can't feel I'm like, Oh, like my right side of my stomach is itching. Is like, itching. I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> So, yeah, because yeah, I would weird. assume that it's probably more of an internal thing because you talked about um, yeah uh, the, the pressure. So, like, you could even probably, you know, have someone try to scratch that itch for you, and it probably would still be there because yeah. it's not necessarily, like, an outside And a fun thing fact, that's... too, um, where, you know, I've had a few different medical complications in the past and everything. So, if you have, or if I have a... Um, 
like something wrong with me where I can't feel because like you know I've had intestinal surgery so whenever my uh, intestines got twisted they said that that should have been excruciating pain and I'm like well it was but it all went to my neck oh no so it's deferred pain <laughs> Oh, wow. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's, a, that's something that I'm sure a lot of people don't realize. They think, uh, you think paralyzed, you think, okay, like, it's it's dead or, you know, it, you can't yeah. feel any of that pain, like the, you know, but it's not. Like, there's so much more yeah. <laughs> to that. Like, the nerves in the body is just, it's an amazing thing anyways. Like I said, I've got a little bit of chiropractic knowledge so I know how like nerves and I know how bones and things like that are all just connected to each other and like um things can compensate for other things and redirection of pain that makes I mean that makes sense but yeah that's pretty wild yeah (laughs) and so and I would assume that like a thing like that it's probably not even something that where you could take medication that could help that or um is it such like a weird sensation that like it's not a pain type well for like for like nerve pain, like you can take nerve pain medicine and stuff like that. And um, when I came home from the hospital, they had me on 10 plus medications and I didn't even really know what I was taking what for. And then um, right. over the years, I, you know, like I wish that was something that somebody had told me, like, you don't need all this. I, yeah. I thought I did because doctors were telling me and I'm like, well, they went to school for it, but yeah. doctors don't know your body, you know, so I've, I've learned a lot. And um yeah, now I, I take, like, a sleeping pill, and I take allergy medicine. So I don't take anything for pain. Yep. I don't take, uh, you know, I don't take anything like that. And I don't take right. anything for muscle spasms. A lot of people take things for that. And yeah. I don't take anything. I take a lot of vitamins. That's about it. That's awesome. Yeah, I know everybody's everybody handles, um, handles situations like that differently. And, um, you know, you like you said, yeah. you know your body. You know what you're capable of. You know, you know what you're... Um, and actually, like, handle. being on a lot of medication like that uh, can keep you from having recovery. Really? Because a lot of people will take uh, muscle spasm medication. And, you know, yeah. if, you're, like, if you're killing those muscles, like, they're not going to regenerate right. So. Yeah, or, like, a muscle relaxer. Um, yeah. I know, you know, that was one of the things in chiropractic that we used to talk about um, was where people would be on uh, muscle relaxers or really strong pain medications and like pain is like your body's last resort telling you that something's wrong. If you cover that up, then you can wind up injuring yourself more because you're covering that pain up. So like, you know, something to keep in mind. And I could imagine, like you said, it could, um, it could hinder recovery because you're not getting like, you're, you're kind of blurring out a little bit of like your body's response with medication. So yeah, that's that's uh, something really big with me is I I have to I, you have to about force me to take some pain medicine. Yeah, but, uh, I'm the same way. Like I like I don't want I, this hurts and you know they're like I'll oh, take some medicine. No, <laughs> I don't want to do that. Give me a heat that. pad. Yeah, let me have a heat <laughs> pad or an ice pack. Yeah, or like I'll sit in the bathtub or something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's awesome. that's pretty yep. wild. Um, so I'm trying to think if I have any more questions for you. Do you like, I don't know. Like if you could, um, do you have any like plans? Have you spoke in, uh, with any kind of groups or anything like that? Um, uh, like I'm thinking children, like with injuries. Have you, have you ever thought about doing anything like that? Um, uh, I would say like another thing to add was like, just my attitude with everything. I mean, part of it does stem from me being injured uh, yeah. as a kid. and then, um, But I also did therapy with a lot of kids, too. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. I got injured as a teenager. But I saw a lot of kids, right. like, doing therapy. And, I mean, some of them would be having missing limbs and like, born oh, without wow. limbs. And, you know, all kinds of stuff. People from different countries where, you know, they have bombs and, like, all kinds yeah. of stuff. Like, I had, that How do you was, think like, that... How do you think that impacted your, um, like, how you felt about your injury, seeing other seeing other people, uh, children, younger, and maybe even your age, um, going through similar situations? The, uh, the way that my occupational therapist described it was, um, because you really don't see a lot of kids um, being the way adults are about their injury. You know, you don't see kids, like, letting them keep them down they're usually just like okay yeah. it's what it they're, is 
Yeah, they're yeah. resilient. They're just like, okay, like, so, gotta keep uh, checking. Yeah. <laughs> the way my OT put it was, kids see it as an inconvenience, while adults see it as a disability. You know, wow. kids are like, oh, this is inconvenient. I'll figure a way around it. And, you know, I would see kids in wheelchairs playing hide and seek. You know, and just because yeah. it's not the way other kids will play hide and seek, it still didn't keep them from playing hide and seek. So yeah. I think that I love that. I love that as a message is that just because you do something different, like, don't let it keep you from doing it. Right. And I, Absolutely. Just like uh, like picking up painting with uh, my friends and stuff. I and mean, we're all quads and we all have our different abilities. And uh, yeah. it took us like four <laughs> and a half hours to paint something that it took somebody like eight minutes on a tutorial uh, or something. And, and that, and like, that, I, yeah, I mean, like, that's, you should see me painting something. Like, it takes, like, <laughs> things that you would think that you would, you could do in just, like, no time. Like, I, so yeah, I mean, everybody's got a different yeah. process. Even if you don't have any injuries, like, everybody's got a different process. But yeah. that's, that's awesome that you guys, our painting you know I'm a big yeah. fan of that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's been good too because um I used to be a big drawer but after I got injured I was cussing I'm like nope I'm not oh, doing it no. yeah every time I try like I don't have a steady hand anymore but yeah. painting is different from drawing and I had oh, never man. painted before until like I really came up here and I got around like all my other friends like you know and, and having people like you it makes a difference it really does. Uh, like, even if you're super independent and, yeah, you know, you have all your able-bodied friends. Like, when you get around your wheelchair homies, like, it's just different. Yeah, yeah. you just feel, you feel that connection that's probably yeah. on a completely different level than... Um, it's important to feel understood, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. I'm so glad that you have friends that you can lean on for different situations. So do you think that, um, I know like I wanted to circle back really quick to that last, um, that last thing that you said about, uh, was it your therapist that said that about children being different Mm -hmm. than adults? Do you think that like, you feel like that was how you were when you were 14? Cause I know 14 is like that really weird age. Like we think we're, we think we're older than we are, but we're actually like still kids. And like, you know, sometimes we can be a little bit more, more dramatic. Do you think that like, I'm just wondering like what, like what was, what was going through your mind? Like when that happened, were you like, Oh crap, this is gonna, this is, this is a short thing. I'm going to be fine. Or, you know, was it one of those situations where you were just like, Oh my gosh, like what's my life going to be like? So I definitely did. I mean, feel like it was going to be a short thing just because I had never had anything happen to me traumatic or anything. So I was like, oh, you know, I'll get over it. This will be fine. And yeah. then, you know, whenever it came down to it and then um, really, like, starting things, uh, you know, talking about, like, people being dramatic or anything like that. Like, I was not dramatic at all because so many people stared at me all the time and I did not like the attention and I did yeah. not want people feeling pity for me. And I used that to, like, heal me. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no, like, stop pitying me. Like, you yeah. know, like, I'm, I'm a warrior. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I would just. But that's an awesome outlook. I'm sure that helped you a lot. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, because, I mean, everybody. I mean, when I was in high school, you know, I had friends, like, leave me out because uh, they didn't want to transport my wheelchair or have to worry about transporting me or anything like that. And. You know, there's there's a lot of pros and cons to getting injured young. I mean, like your your friends don't understand, and they kind of see you as an inconvenience. But then, you know, like whenever I got to college, and then I made other friends, which I mean, I still do have really good friends from elementary school, that, and they're my OG friends that I still hang out yeah. with. And then I went to college, and I have other friends that you know made me a priority, and you know, and, you know, made sure I was included. And, Right. Stuff like that, and then when I got you older, just was I, able to like weed out those unimportant people that you know. Yeah, you're lucky you didn't have to spend a whole lot of extra time on them, but yeah. Yeah, and then I got older, and uh, after that, I I got my accessible van that I can drive from. So then I had my own transportation, so I didn't yeah. have to rely on everybody else. But you know, the ones that were willing to come get me beforehand, like I mean, those right. are the ones I was driving to go see. So. Good. That that's awesome. I that's an awesome like way to look at that is to just you know really cherish the people that um that put the energy into you that you put into them and those friendships those are golden those are gonna last a lifetime. 
so. quality over quantity. That's exactly right. And that's probably, that's probably like one of my biggest, uh, one of my biggest struggles is I'm just like, I don't, you know, you feel like you think that you want like a bunch, but then it's like, no, you need to cherish the ones that, that are there and that show up for you on a daily basis or, you know, on a regular basis and, you know, awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on today, Boo. Like, you are such an inspiration. Um, Like I said, I've been following your story for a while, and I cannot wait to see what the future holds for you. Um, So I want to thank you on behalf of the team and every single person that heard your story today and connected with it after the podcast. Um, I will be heading straight to my easel and I'll be creating a painting that represents what I personally felt and saw from your story. Um, If anyone is interested in seeing the process or getting one of the few limited, excuse me, one of the few limited prints uh, as a reminder to step into your own power, uh, you can do that. So on my website um, and you can follow us at I am power club on Instagram and yeah, so thank you so much. You're you're such an inspiration. Uh, I cannot wait to see what the future holds for you. Like, thank you. Oh, it's been awesome having you on this show. I really appreciate it. If uh, if you have any like wheelchair users, dog foot injury people like that that uh, end up wanting to reach out to me on Instagram, I just want to say like I welcome that because I'm not one of those people that are like in research. I'm not going to tell anybody about it. Like I will send you the links. I, I want everybody involved. Yes. Like let's help everybody. You know, that's so. awesome yeah, yeah so they can find you on facebook at boo williams, williams. like with like a wheel so like yeah. i will actually i will link that to the podcast um and, yeah. the YouTube and then so that my instagram is that. the same so. awesome yeah so cool. you'll be able to find those links down below guys i'm gonna add that to uh to the podcast as well so that you can follow Boo's story and her journey and see all of the amazing things that she is up to. She's super inspirational. Um, yeah. And like she said, like she will be happy to share any information that you guys are interested in. So awesome. How incredibly inspiring is she? If you personally felt connected to Boo's story or you know somebody that would, and you would like to purchase one of the limited edition prints that goes along with it as a reminder to step into your own power Those will go live this week at jessicajames.com. That's J-E-S-C-A-J-A-Y-M-E-S.com. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at I Am Power Club. And of course, like and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss next week's episode of I Am Power. See you then.